Howdy everyone! Here's a Canon lens that could be a bit of a dream come true for landscape photographers, among other people. The EF 16-35mm f4 IS USM L, their latest ultra wide angle lens for full frame cameras and this time with image stabilization. It's about £650 or $1000, obviously quite a considerable investment, especially for an f4 lens which is only an average maximum aperture. Now, Canon don't exactly have a shining reputation for making full frame ultra wide angle lenses. Their aging 17-40mm L lens has soft corners and their 14mm f2.8 lens is ridiculously overpriced while being no sharper than Samyang's offering a quarter of the price. Here's hoping that this new ultra wide lens could yield some optical surprises as well as giving us image stabilization. Let's take a look at that IS for a moment. Here's some footage with it turned off. Turn the stabilization on and you get a much more steady image as you can see. The mechanism makes a slight whirring and clicking sound, noticeable but not dreadful. It's well behaved as you tilt and pan the camera around which is useful for video work. It's perhaps not quite the strongest image stabilization I've ever seen but it does help you quite a lot to get sharper pictures and smoother video. On a full frame camera, 16 to 35 mm is an ultra wide to standard wide angle focal length. Very handy for landscape and architectural photography or for making small places seem a lot bigger. On an APS-C camera though, it's just a standard wide angle zoom range, nothing special really. If you own an APS-C camera then you'd be far better off with a dedicated fast standard zoom lens instead, a nice 17 to 50 mm f2.8 for example. Anyway, let's look at this Canon lens's build quality. Considering its maximum aperture is only f4, the lens is pretty big, even bigger than my 24 to 105 mm L lens. It's made of high quality plastics but weighs over 600 grams or almost one and a half pounds. It might seem like a great lens for landscape photography but I wouldn't fancy hiking around Mount Snowden with that thing swinging around my neck. However, it does have a 77mm filter thread, so thankfully you can still use filters, unlike a lot of other modern ultra wide angle lenses. As you can see, at the rear there is a weather sealing gasket around the metal lens mount. The zoom ring works extremely smoothly, being nicely damped and slightly heavy to turn. In my opinion, that's a real advantage for video work. The focus ring also turns very smoothly and precisely as you'd expect for a Canon L lens. There is, of course, full time manual focus available. The USM autofocus motor works blindingly fast, very quietly and very accurately. It's quite fast in live view mode too. However, if you're shooting autofocus during video work then you'll hear a gentle clicking sound from the mechanism as the lens micro adjusts. Overall, the build quality of this Canon L lens is top notch in every way. I really do wish it wasn't so big and heavy though. Picture quality then. Canon had better pull something good out of the bag here. Firstly, and most importantly, let's see how it performs on a full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D, without any corrections. At 16mm and f4, in the middle of the image, we see razor sharpness. How about in those critical image corners though? Well, unlike its older 17-40mm brother, the lens holds on to good resolution into the edges. They're not razor sharp at f4, but they're good, and we don't see very much chromatic aberration. This is very pleasing to see. Stop down to f5.6 for an extra burst of sharpness and brightness and at f8 we see a really excellent image. Let's zoom in to 35mm now. Again at f4 the middle of the image is very sharp. Over in the corners things are a tiny bit softer but resolution is still good and the chromatic aberration we saw before has now vanished. Once again though, stop down to f5.6 and you'll be rewarded with really excellent image quality in those corners which stays about the same as you stop down further. Overall, on a full frame camera, the lens's sharpness is refreshing to see. You can depend upon it to get you sharp images from corner to corner and outright excellence if you stop down to f5.6 which is all you can realistically ask for from an ultra wide lens on a full frame camera. 
Very good work, Canon. As I said before, if you're using an APS-C camera, you might be a lot better off with a 17-50mm fast standard zoom lens. But let's take a look at this lens's performance on an APS-C camera anyway, a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. Straight from f4, the lens is nice and sharp, from the middle of the images into the corners. Interestingly, on an APS-C camera, we actually see less chromatic aberration in the corners than full frame, a rare characteristic. It suggests that, on a full frame camera, the lens is excellently corrected for chromatic aberration, but only until you reach the very edges. Anyway, stop down for a touch more resolution. And it's the same story at 35mm. The lens really is very sharp indeed, no matter what you do. So, APS-C camera owners might have far more practical options at their disposal for a standard zoom lens, but nothing much sharper. Alright then, let's look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. At 16mm we see quite heavy barrel distortion. It's certainly not the worst I've ever seen, and admittedly the lens is quite close to my test chart here, which emphasises it slightly more. But it's still pretty bad, and will be noticeable when you're shooting architecture. At f4, vignetting is also quite noticeable, with rather dark corners. Stop down to f5.6 to push that darkness right into the edges, and at f8, the vignetting is gone. If you zoom in to 35mm, then we see some noticeable pincushion distortion, and again, heavy vignetting at f4, which falls across the frame in a softer way than at 16mm. However, stop down to f5.6, and it is largely gone. So, unfortunately, Canon are unable to bring anything new to the table here. Next, close-up image quality. The lens can focus as closely as 28cm, about average nowadays for an ultra-wide angle lens. Close-up image quality is a little soft at f4, but nice and sharp once you stop down to f5.6. Let's see now how the lens works against bright lights, something important to consider, as those wide angles might pick up the sun easily. We're in for a disappointment here, as the lens shows some very clear flaring and a considerable loss of contrast when bright lights are in or just around the picture. It's not even very pretty flaring, to be honest. Nothing good here. Let's take a quick look at coma levels, for those who are interested. The good news is that this lens is well corrected for coma problems. Even at f4 and in the corners of your images, bright points of light are clear and not smudged out in any way. Finally, bokeh. You won't often get very out of focus backgrounds with this lens, simply by its wide angle nature. But when you do, the lens handles them with no problems at all. They always look nice and smooth. Well, overall, clearly we're playing with a very sharp lens here. A thousand dollars is a lot to ask, but considering this lens's sharpness and nice image stabilisation, I think a lot of people will accept the high price Canon are asking for. But in some areas, the lens's optics are a little haphazard. Canon haven't managed to find a cure for vignetting and distortion, although you do come to expect that from this kind of optic. Its work against bright lights, though, really is poor. Also, considering the fact that both Tamron and Sigma are now abandoning making their premium lenses out of plastic, it could be about time that Canon upped their game in this area too if they want to continue trying to value their lenses above the competition, although at least plastic keeps the weight down. Hmm, I mentioned the competition. A similar lens that costs about the same as this new Canon offering is Tamron's excellent 15-30mm f2.8 VC USD, which is also image stabilised. Let's do a quick comparison. I can imagine some people will be weighing those two up. You've just heard me talking trash about the Canon lens's size, well, the behemoth Tamron lens's mass is even more unwieldy. It weighs well over a kilogram, and takes up a lot of space in your kit bag, and it can't accept filters either, so that's a couple of major points to Canon. But of course, there's no escaping the fact that the Tamron lens lets in twice as much light, a big technical advantage. The two lenses are both made of plastic with high build quality, weather sealing, and fast, silent, accurate autofocus motors. However, the Canon lens has a much smoother zoom ring than the Tamron, which could be very useful for video work. Both lenses struggle with distortion and vignetting about as badly as each other. 
When it comes to sharpness, even with a Tamron lens topped down to f4, the Canon lens does have a very small advantage in its image corners. The L lens is just a touch sharper, but really, both lenses put in a strong performance. Then again, the Tamron lens deals with bright lights much, much better than the Canon. I'd say that the biggest reason to choose the Canon lens is its much smaller size and weight. The monstrous Tamron lens is the obvious choice of anyone who needs an aperture as wide as f2.8, or who are desperate for a very slightly wider angle. It is a difficult choice, although personally, I'd probably go for the Canon lens for its portability and its filter thread. Enjoy making your own minds up though, they're both very nice optics indeed.